They finally buffed what I think is the best god card in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. Of course, I'll talk about none other than Obelisk of Tormentor. Now, let me show you something, okay? When Yu-Gi-Oh first came out with the god cards, Obelisk by far was the best one because for some reason, between the three, this is the only card that made us your opponent cannot target it with card effects. Now, this is pretty broken. Even today, it's a very good effect. Back then, it was crazy because you can't do stuff like brain control and things like that because that requires targeting. And because of how good Obelisk was on his own, that card never really received that much support. In fact, if you type in Obelisk, this is all you see. Breaking the Ruin God, which just came out, and Soul Energy Max, which also just came out. Then there's also Fist of Fate, but it's not really that great. But really, these are the two main ones. But just to show you an example, if I type in Slifer, you also see nothing. All we got is Revive Sky God, which is very good. It allows you to draw a lot of cards, but it can backfire because it also makes it so your opponent can draw. This is good and bad depending on the situation, but it can be fantastic. Now, to show you how bad Wing Dragon of Raw was, that card initially was so ass that they had to add all of the support. In fact, so much that you can make a soul Wing Dragon of Raw deck. You can't do that with Slifer and Obelisk. But the idea is you get the protection on board with Eternal Soul and Dragon Knight. And you also get the body so you can get Obelisk out of the field so you can do the cool stuff along with Breaking the Ruin God and Soul Energy Max. But of course, because this is a multiple card combo, we likely won't see this in this video, but I will do my best, so we'll see what happens. But now before we start the video, I gotta get everyone to comment buff Obelisk or buff Slifer or buff the God cards, because it's honestly not fair. I get it that Raw was bad and needed all the support, but this is crazy. The amount of Raw cards that pop up as opposed to Obelisk and Slifer is sickening. So I need Konami to stop having favoritism and buff the others, because even if they did, the cards will still be ass. But yeah, without further ado, Let's see what we can do with this. All right, let's do this. I'll be honest with you. I've actually tried to make Obelisk work a lot. And 90% of the time, I could not draw this card to save my life at three. Of course, now that I have it at two, I'm getting this left and right. Okay, but the problem is I can't do much with this hand. This hand is actually awful. So I'm honestly about to gamble this. I'm going to do Magician Souls. I mean, that's the thing that sucks about these cards is, is you're going to break a lot. I'm going to just do this. Yeah, I'm gonna do that actually. Let's be smart. Because if I if I draw into nothing, my hand is dead. At least this way, I'll get Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl in the graveyard. I guess I could have just summoned the No, because I wanted Dark Magician Girl in the graveyard. Alright. Now we simply set Eternal Soul and hope that they don't have Harpy's Feather Duster. I mean this this ending board <laughs> This end board sucks. <laughs> Four rocks. Let's draw. And I get one measly draw. They're letting it happen. This is one of those times where this is literally the best card I could have drawn in the entire deck. Yo! I love it! This card sucks, by the way. Because the one drawback of Soul Crossing is after you activate it, you cannot activate any more cards. Well, you get one. You get one for that turn and the next turn. The fact that it's basically for two turns is crazy. I get it's supposed to be like a weaker version of Super Polarization, but the drawback is so bad, especially considering that it's only viable for God cards. It's not even like a Super Poly level of card. All right, so we got one. Oh, we got BLS. We get BLS here, basically. Summon one more card, one more card, just one more card. One more card, one more card, one more card. Are we gonna get Obelisk in the first minute? Unfortunately, I feel like they're gonna immediately leave. That sucks. It's Soul Day. This is gonna do actually a lot here. All right, so they're gonna be locked into Ooh, they're gonna be locked into Warriors, right? I think. I believe so. When a soul day is summoned, you are locked into Warriors for the rest of the turn. Here's one. Literally just need one more. One more. One more card. It's just never gonna happen, is it? Why are you why 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 are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Why are we do this? That's a pretty strong card. I guess we're activating it! Well, no, no, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. Because when this is destroyed, I got to summon Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl. So that's bodies. That's more bodies. Unless they negate that. If they negate that, then I am kind of screwed. Perfect! I am... Wait. No, they're just going to hit the Dark Magicians. That's fine. All right. Now we Eternal Soul. Activate the effect. Now, this is the part where if they have Harpy's Feather Duster, even a MST, they can blow up my entire field. So we do this. Dark Magician, you're here for a second. I'm going to pull a quick Yugi moment and tribute my main monsters here for Obelisk. Or I guess in anime, it was Slifer. Bring out Obelisk the Tormentor. 
we were still... Oh, no, 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 no. Soul Crossing is in main face only. That's why. Okay. Please summon one more card. Just one more monster. The problem is, is I wanted to activate Soul Crossing during their turn. That way, I get one card my turn. Or that turn, and then my turn. But this way, if they end their turn, I am screwed! Oh, that sucks! At all. This is not bad. I'm gonna summon uh, Dark Magician. And that happened. Looks like they don't have another. I don't know what this is. This could work out. This could work out really, really well. Or honestly, I could summon Dark Magician Girl. That's fine. Oh, even better! Because I'm gonna activate Bomb Between Teacher and Student. Watch this! Get Dark Magician Girl out! <laughs> Ooh, this is about to be satisfying. Uh, sure. We'll set this. Not that it matters. And now, I tribute all the monsters in your side of the field to summon the Obelisk, the Tormentor. By attributing this, that, or whatever this is, I bring back the god, rise from the ground, and destroy my enemy. Oh, I know they're mad. I know they're mad. Attack. Punch him in the face. And Dark Magician Girl, finish the duel for us. Bring it on home. Woo! We're not losing the Warrocks. Here's the thing. If Warrock ever beats you, someone plays a Warrock deck, you lie. You lie, okay? This wouldn't normally happen against any other deck. <laughs> I do think Dark Magician is actually a pretty good engine to use breaking the Ruin God because you draw a lot. This hand is not good going second because I have no interruptions, but it's a great hand. Uh, I don't want to sit through this. Yeah, this is the one thing that sucks because in order to make the Obelisk engine work in this deck with this engine, I had to cut back on hand traps. So the only hand traps I have are Ash Blossom at two and two max C, so I have like no imperm and stuff like that. So unfortunately, a lot of the times if you go first, you're gonna watch your opponent play and you won't be able to do anything. So we'll see where this goes, but it's a synchro deck, so we're gonna be here for a while. Well, my opponent pops off here. The idea that I had was, well, I had many ideas and all of them suck because the thing about Obelisk is you brick a lot. But with the Dark Magician engine, you can actually draw a lot once the setup is correct. So once you have Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl in the graveyard, you can draw a plus two with Soul Servant every single time. So that's great. So that's what I was kind of hoping for is you get the Dark Magician set up first and then you can go into your Obelisk set up to actually like win that way. It's kind of like the win condition. Plus a little bit of flash here and stuff like that. Problem though is, like I said, I don't have hand traps outside of Maxi and Ash. And if I don't open up with them going second, especially against a deck like this that I know I can normally beat, it, it's gonna be GG's. Chaos Angel. Well, this is the first time I'm on the other end of this car, so let's see what happens. And emergency teleport? Good lord! I can still get into something. Great. So, I actually need to draw into a poly right now. Right now. <laughs> that wasn't it. That wasn't it. Oh, you got it, bro. You got it. Hey, you got it. You got it! We just witnessed the main reason why Maxi needs to die. I just got done talking about bricks, man. There's no way you're gonna give me this. It's just there's no way, man. There's there's no way. Like, why? Like, what did I do? What did I do? See if I grab like so the idea that I have is I could do this. We'll send one of these obelisks back. I don't why is there two in my hand, man? I only have two in the deck. Magician's rod. And I think the best play that I can do here. Is I lose the one interruption by the way. Game over. Because <laughs> if this is any other Dark Magician card, I can do a lot here. I have to. I literally have to grab this and hope that I draw into a Dark Magician. If I draw into a Dark Magician right now in the next three cards, I'm in great shape. I can actually damn near win like this. And we can also see the next three cards as well. So we can even see if it's worth even still dueling. We did not get it. We did not get it. I can get this. 
that doesn't do anything for me. That sucks. I guess I'm, I am just ending my turn here. But we get to see Breaking the Ruin God next turn if I don't die here. <laughs> I'm in danger. Anyways, this is what Maxi needs to die. I feel like if they errata Maxi so you can't blast it when you have cards in your field, I think it'll be fine. Card will be okay. I, the issue with Maxi, it's supposed to deal with combo decks. But the problem is when you set up your full combo like that, they had a bunch of negates. I think they had like two or three or interruptions. And then they blast Maxi as well. It's like, great. I'm not doing anything there. But if they do Maxi where you can't play it when you have a card, or this is what I would do. Maxi can only be played once per duel. Once you activate it, the rest of the Maxis in your deck are dead. And two, you cannot activate Maxi while you have a card active on your field. Even if you have a face on card, nothing. Because then you have to be a bit smart about it. Ancient Warriors, this is not good. This deck actually bounces monsters. It does target though, if I recall correctly. So if that's the case, next turn when I summon Obelisk, I should be fine. But they can even do that too. They're returning my Magician's Rod for no reason at all. Can they actually kill me here? You know, actually, now that I think about it, that was a dumb play on their part. Because next turn, I can summon Rod again and then get my entire Dark Magician set up. As long as I don't die, we win next turn. And that's actually going to be beautiful. Then again, I can also very well die here really easily. Oh! Am I still alive? Do they have, like, another card they can summon from their hand? Because if that's the case, I do literally explode here. And unfortunately, I don't get to do the cool combo. Do I sense ha- What I do? Oh, that's the card right there. This card right here is crazy. All right, we're going to also... We have our toggle set to on, by the way, because this card works on main phase only. Not that it matters, because when you summon Obelisk using Breaking the Ruin God, Obelisk is unaffected by cards, period, for the rest of the turn. End your turn. Yes! All right, so frame one, watch this. Breaking the Ruin God! I will activate Breaking the Ruin God, and I summon Obelisk to Torment. Doesn't matter, bro, you can't negate it. In fact, I dare you. I hope you negate it. I'm going to throw up, actually. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Obelisk! Awesome. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and punch this one in the face. Let's just go ahead and just get it out of here. I wonder if they're going to try to even activate the effect. All right, main phase two. Now, this is the part where we have to be very, very careful with how we do anything because the problem is... Actually, you know what? I have a smart thing I can do. If I summon this, as long as it doesn't get negated, you've got to be kidding me. You actually got to be kidding me. <gasps> oh, Yu-Gi-Oh! What have they done to my game? I guess we have to get souls. Yeah, we'll get souls. And they're going to get one card here. As long as they don't have something else that they can activate, they get one draw here. will banish you. They'll activate the effect. Just kidding, they can't. And now we do this to grab... I think it's a dark magic. Plus one. So I played through that. I think I played through that really, really well. The Max C. They got one draw here. Do I give them one more draw? I think I should. Wait a minute. I can do Chaos Angel here. For some reason, Chaos Angel... Doesn't require a tuner because of how the car was written. So you can do it, but then you won't get the, the, the top effect. They get one more draw. Chaos Angel. We get the effect. We're going to banish this, and now we just end our turn. All right, and now I I pass and literally frame one. Obviously, unfortunately, leaves. Frame one. We flip Eternal Soul, and hopefully they don't have... Paul by the grave. Because if they do, they just win the duel right here. <laughs> Loser. <laughs>